Hey everybody. All right. So we're trying this again. Um, last August, I recorded myself going home uh, to from work, basically. During the month of August, I recorded myself talking about things that happened in the news, things that happened uh, in sports, things that happened. It was supposed to be like in comics and in like anime that I was watching, but it usually boiled down to things I saw in the news and things that I saw on sports or in television. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm not going to do it every day like I did the last time because by Friday my voice was shot and I was just repetitively covering all the topics. Like, if you ever want to understand why the news talks about things the, so much the way that they do, is uh, just try and talk about everything that happens all day. And look at the things that catch your interest and realize that there's not that many things that catch your interest that you can talk about for 24 hours. So, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a Monday night, uh, uh, Kale goes home. Uh, and I'm going to do a Friday night. Kale goes home for the weekend. And what I'm going to do on Monday is I'm going to tell you about the things that I want to do during the week. And on Friday, I'm going to actually tell you whether or not I did them. And there's going to be pretty much uh, video proof that I said I was going to do them and whether I did them or not. Uh, <coughs> it's going to be on my Instagram and my uh, Twitter, which is MWKale uh, for both I managed to look out that way. So M W K A Y A L. If you go follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, greatly appreciate it. So uh, first things first. Uh, it's the new year. It's January second. Um, a lot of people are going to rag on 2017, and rightfully so. I mean, we lost uh, the first step of net neutrality. Uh, Basically, the government uh, wants to charge people more for internet, or I shouldn't say the government wants to charge people more for internet. Uh, the people who run the internet uh, want to uh, charge people more and control like the flow of the internet and whatnot. Now, mind you, there is an argument to be made for uh, making people pay for more uh, service than having everything be open to uh, whatever. Now, it's a slippery slope. One which I don't want to go down because, like, soon they'll start charging us for uh, faster internet, so the basic internet will suck. It'll fuck. It'll suck. Uh, then they'll start wanting to charge us to use Google because they, Yahoo is their homepage. So, they don't like, right beforehand, everyone agreed, like, we're going to keep everything neutral. Now, uh, they've taken out that mechanism where, like, it's up to them whether they do it or not. Now, we still live in a pseudo uh, options uh, environment where we can use more, we can, if, if one internet provider is uh, screwing us over, we can go to another one. But, uh, that's like saying, well, this one airline screwed us over, so we're going to use another one. Meanwhile, they are the only ones. There is no other options. Like, there's the illusion of uh, options, but uh, what we really have is an oligopoly. Like, like Hertz. Like, not the, the Hertz is a bad rental car company, but say Hertz is the one that screws you over. You're going to go to either a budget or enterprise or a local one, but... If they all screw you over, you have very few options. So, it's one of those deals where you got to be careful. Uh, there was a lot of natural disasters in 2017. That Houston flooded because of rain. Uh, because the way they built the city, they never get more than six inches of rain a year. So they turned everything into concrete. They didn't have any drainage. So that when they did get uh, six feet of rain, the entire city flooded. Uh, a lot of places got hit by uh, hurricanes, like places that are in the Caribbean that are in the hurricane stretch. Uh, and 
When people in South Florida tell you, uh, we're a little afraid of this one, that means it's a big-ass hurricane. Uh, so, a lot of damage was done, natural causes, and uh, poor planning because, like, we're in a generation that we know that the weather in these areas are is going to get bad. And unfortunately, uh, people have been anti-science just enough for long enough that uh, no one believes people when they say, hey, southern Manhattan is going to get flooded. Uh, these spots are going to get flooded. We are going to be in uh, like a heavy-duty uh, storm uh, cycle for the next 40 years give or take. But, uh, enough people, like, uh, stopped thinking about science. So, then, what else was in 2007? There was a lot of, it depends what you're into. I mean, if you're into Star Wars, I mean, Last Jedi, I mean, you either really hated that one or you really liked it. Uh, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Uh, but it just makes you realize there hasn't been a perfect Star Wars movie. Like, the original trilogy is as close as possible to, like, a really awesome, perfect story. Because everything kind of balanced out. Like, uh, like the first Star Wars was great. But uh, you just realize that it was a... Like, you, like if you're a film buff, you just realize uh, that they took a lot of things from... Uh, I shouldn't even say they. It was George Lucas. There was no they. It was George Lucas uh, in control of uh, the movie, and he stole a lot of the things that he liked from his influences. Uh, then you have Empire, which uh, the the one flaw I think what people bring up is like there was a lot of time spent with like the on training uh, with Yoda, with Luke, but. Empire is my favorite one. I'm not uh, knocking that one. Then Return of the Jedi. Yeah, fucking Ewoks, and with Ewoks, I mean, sure, fine. Uh, George Lucas really loves puppets, uh, or I should say, his vision required a lot of puppet. Uh, and then CG came along, and then CG was very much George Lucas's uh, go-to. And I think that was his downfall on the prequels. Because if they had just done a few more things a little bit more practically, I think it would have been uh, better received, even though the, the CG was one of the high points in the films. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he did it with every one, but... Uh, there was a documentary uh, piece, like, for the making of that I saw in the prequels where Lucas would um, shoot the movies with uh, no-name actors so that they could get a reference for the CG. And there's something about that one where you're, you're going to be chaining yourself to the special effects, which... If that's how you want to go, go, go with it. Like sometimes it works out really good, but it there was a like a little bit of spirit that you lose in that. Like there's a little bit of freshness that you lose. And George Lucas is a really good filmmaker, but he's not. But I think uh, the Phantom Menace, like his rust, was showing. In how to make movies, and then uh, Clone Wars. That's the one thing about Last Jedi. I don't think this is going to be my favorite one of the new trilogies. I, I because I always liked the second movies in the trilogies more. I liked Empire Strikes Back. I liked Clone Wars. I wasn't a fan that everyone got a lightsaber. Uh, one of the cool things about the the original movies was uh, the lightsabers were only on screen for maybe four or five minutes total, but with uh, Clone Wars uh, and the uh, prequels, like, everybody got lightsabers, like, uh, and it, it, like, it lost some of the charm of it, so, 
like 2017 of movies wasn't bad. I mean, uh, in no particular order, Wonder Woman, Atomic Blonde, uh, I want to say Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but it, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Thor Ragnarok were really good movies, but at the same time, uh, they weren't real stories. And I want to say Guardians did a better job of, uh, of pathos a little bit better, or pathos or ethos, whatever the one means, uh, emotions, but because, uh, every time both of those movies for Marvel got serious, um, they would undercut it with a joke, and it's great movies. I want to say Thor Ragnarok, uh, had one of the, Thor Ragnarok had my favorite shot of the entire year when they had, um, the Valkyries charge on Hela, and that flashback scene, the way they shot it was, uh, they took high definition cameras and they used it in a, like a strobe effect so that it was a 360 degree thing and it would cause all these rich shadows to appear and that, it, it, it's like, it's like watching a live painting or not a live, like instead of, if, if they, if you told me that someone actually painted, uh, like, 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 um, masters, like, um, uh, t- trying to think of, like, what would be the comparable, uh, uh, t- what's the art term, like, I don't know, if you don't, uh, I want to say Dutch masters for whatever reason, but, like, if Alex Ross, uh, painted every single frame of those shots, I would believe you, because, uh, he, like, it was ultra-realistic, and it was very, um, practical, and that's another thing, too. I think 2017 is the year we all started wanting to have practical effects just come back, uh, because there are so many things that we're not getting anymore that are just gone to CG. We don't get miniatures that much anymore. We don't get, uh, uh, like, spe- like, special effects makeup, it's, like, if you see, uh, someone on screen, and they're, like, a, like, an impossible to character, uh, to bring to life, like, they just do CG, which, I think that's, like, a, uh, cop-out almost now, because, just to go back to Star Wars, I'm, I'm sure, like, the Jar Jar Binks puppet would have been, uh, like, very difficult to work with, to capture, but, I will say this, uh, I think if Jar Jar Banks was an actual puppet, we would have uh, liked him a little bit better. A little bit. So, more films. Uh, Justice League in 2017 came out, and it was some middle of the road. Uh, it was totally mediocre um, in every way. Uh Warner Brothers really wanted it to succeed, so they took a lot of the criticism of Zack Snyder's other films, like, it's too long, it's uh, too dark, it's uh, not cheery enough, it was like, and they completely undercut it, because they actually had people talk about the the cut that, um, that they previewed, not, it wasn't a complete, total finished product, like, a lot of the CG wasn't in there, um, like, a lot of the things were, uh, animatics, uh, thrown in, like, that were gonna be finished afterwards, but, the description of the cut that Zack Snyder had been working on was awesome, I would have loved, loved to have seen that movie, but, uh, Warner Brothers, they, they got cold feet, and they went middle of the road. They brought in Joss Whedon, who is a respectable director, and they wanted to cash in on that uh, Avengers uh, magic. And Justice League, I think, made $200 million, a little bit less uh, than Wonder Woman did. 
and a lot less than Avengers did in the same time span. But they were hoping that Justice League made a billion dollars. That's what they were hoping for. And, like, suits do not know how to do that. It's, they're trying to formula their way into success. And, mind you, you can do that. You can formula your way into success. However, you are not going to do it the way that you think you are. Like, and th there's, like, little touches that was like, all right, I can see that you're trying. Like, when you hear the Batman theme from the Batman uh, animated series, which they just brought in Danny Elfman to redo uh, the score over the guy that was going to do, uh, like, I'm not going to say techno, but, like, when the guy's name is, like, DJ whatever, uh, you know there's going to be a certain type of music in there, and it was not that type of music in the final product, so... Warner Brothers uh, had to bring back uh, Henry Cavill for uh, reshoots, and uh, Paramount, in the ultimate trolling, uh, decided that they were going to uh, make it so that he couldn't shave off his mustache. So, instead of uh, spending a couple hundred bucks on the, for Paramount to uh, reshoot their movie, Warner Brothers had to spend $50 million reshooting theirs. And that one hurt. You know that one hurt because, uh, like, I heard rumors that uh, Warner Brothers was, like, getting help from everybody. Like, the, like I think Disney lent them uh, resources. Uh, so, Justice League was middle of the road. They were supposed to have two movies. Like, the first movie was introduction uh, to the main guy in number two. Uh, Superman probably wasn't going to get fixed uh, the way he did uh, in one movie. But just certain things, like, they, they, they screwed themselves over. The suits got scared, and they screwed themselves over. And I don't know who, who's, whose idea it was. I don't know if it was Diane Lane uh, uh, saying that the movie sucked or whatever in the press ahead of time. Uh, I don't know. But they got scared. They went middle of the road. And they, uh, they failed. They fell on their face. And I don't know who's, who was in charge, but the... Producers supposedly were the ones that were adamant that it had to be under two hours, and then they were adamant about this and that, and there was a lot of micromanaging going on. And the best thing I can say about Justice League is that it is 16 uh, parts uh, that are really good, but they don't for, form a truly cohesive, and the parts that are there, like that should have been leading up to a better movie experience weren't there so there's that and speaking of uh, suits or whatever Marvel uh, or not Marvel but it's going to affect Marvel Disney bought uh, six, uh, 50 to 60 billion dollars of uh, 20th Century Fox now the IPs that you wouldn't assume are Disney are now Disney X-Files, Avatar, the original Star Wars, the Alien movies, Predator movies, I think, uh, the X-Men. X we, in 2018, we are now going to have to like expect uh, Marvel movies to have X-Men in it. And I am very much looking forward to this. And, on top of that, we are now going to hopefully get a good Fantastic Four movie. I don't know how they're going to do it. Everyone wants, uh, uh, like, like a, like a definitive introduction. I'm all for the way that they did it beforehand. Uh, we got introduced to, uh, Hawkeye in Thor. We got introduced to, uh, Black Widow, who, by the way, 
where the hell has her movie been at? She's, like, uh, Scarlett Johansson's been doing, like, the, the badass chick character forever, and, like, where is the Scarlet Witch movie, uh, that we sh should have had by now? So, anyway, uh... Trying to think of what else we got. We got uh, Spider Man in Civil War. We got. Uh, I'm trying to think of like other ones. Uh, like we got a like a snippet of of Thor in Doctor Strange. We got a snippet of Thor in Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, So, with the X-Men and with the Fantastic Four, I'm all for, the, like, quick casting uh, somebody and throwing him in as a stinger on uh, one of the movies in production. I mean, hell, they're going up against Thanos and Infinity War this year. So, think about this. That gauntlet, uh, that Infinity Gauntlet, uh, is a reboot machine. Like, those stones in there, like time, space, reality, they could change anything instantly. Like, they could kill the Avengers and bring them back in the next scene. It's totally possible. Uh, so, if there's any characters that need to be put in the drawer for, uh, time being... Like the one, like the mainstays, like Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America, they could definitely go in the drawer for about four or five years. Uh, Marvel can make Black Panther movies. They can make Punisher TV shows. Uh, maybe movies of the Defenders that uh, aren't going to be on Netflix, because with Disney uh, buying. Uh, the 20th Century Fox properties and they got a part of Hulu again so they own a bigger stake of Hulu and they want to make their own streaming service that's all their properties next year so I don't know for sure whether or not uh, the Marvel properties on Netflix are going to stay on Netflix I think eventually they're going to move over but uh who knows? It's it's still up in the air right now. Uh, there's a strong possibility that the government could say, uh, no, you're not allowed to have a monopoly on IPs. Which, by the way, I know, like, I can understand monopolizing resources, but there's probably going to be a new company that comes out of this. Because either Disney is going to just keep 20th Century, uh, drop the Fox, or even keep the Fox... Like, and just have them be that brand of stuff. Or, they could sell off the IPs, make back some of their money, and who's ever uh, buying them could be their own company, or what have you. And Disney keeps the X-Men Fantastic Four stuff, the original Star Wars. But, Disney bought Marvel a few years ago so that they could have a brand for boys. Because... Disney princesses, they had girls on lockdown, so they needed boys, so they bought Marvel. Now, Disney could uh, want to make uh, something for not kids, uh, and keep like the aliens, the predators, like all this Fox stuff, keep that, and uh, go about their day. So, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Now, I think that's a little bit of news uh, that I've been talking about uh, that's been going on uh, in 2017. Uh, I'm not going to mention politics. I really want to stay out of that one just because politics is a quagmire. It is uh, that watershed area where all the mosquitoes live. But it turns out the mosquitoes are needed for whatever reason. And all the itchy swamp algae out there is needed for whatever reason. And it's just one of those complicated issues because 
whether or not you agree with the one side or another, they serve a, a purpose, and unfortunately, the purpose is not uh, and clear uh, past uh, several years, but they do serve a function, and like uh, the discussion of that function has been toxic, to say the least, because it's so polarized that you can't even get anything done to talk about it. So I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, but, uh, like I said, MWKL, uh, MWKL Instagram, uh, MWKL Twitter. So, uh, let me know what you guys uh, think if you want me to talk, uh, some of the news but that deals with that. Because I'll talk that neutrality, no problem, because I'm putting this on YouTube and other places, maybe, and that's going to affect me. So, there's a reason why everyone wants net neutrality. Like, pure net neutrality. So anyway, uh, here's my goals for the week. Uh, actually, you know what? It's the first one of the year, first one ever. Uh, here's my goals for the year. I want to make four uh, projects uh, materialize, be it books, movies, or uh, comics. These are my own works. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, I have ten stories on Amazon in one book. Uh, if you search uh, Matt uh, Kale or if you search uh, Double Barrel Theater on Amazon, you could probably find my book. Uh, like, you hit me up, guys. I would give you a cheaper copy because, uh, like, the markup uh, through Amazon on that book is it's it is what it is. So, like, I will sell you one for a cheaper price that I still make money on. Uh, all right, so I have a couple things in the works now. I'm not going to talk about them because uh, just out of like comfort and like uh, superstition. So things I want to talk to you about are RPG Princess, which is uh, I'm making a children book for adults, but not adults like young adults. Uh, about a girl princess because there's only kind of one girl princess that I'm aware of, uh, and. She wants independence and uh, and like self sovereignty, and her family is like no. So she runs away, and she finds her own castle. She finds her own uh, dragon, and it, it's a it's a fairly short story. But uh, like I have things drawn, I I gotta find someone who can like just elevate the drawings because like. Uh, I can draw, but I'm not a pro. Like, there's a level of difference in what regular people can do, which I count myself as, and pros. And I am not a pro. And there's going to be a companion piece to that one, uh, like uh, like the prince in women's clothes. Uh, it's sort of a uh, BU book, uh, and. I'm trying to find a niche uh, genre that no one's touching, and I think that one's it. And that one's a little bit like more straightforward. Like I'm probably going to draw that one too, but uh, like I said, I need someone to just help me out, just like elevate the drawings to like like pro. Like I can't draw clean lines to save my life, and there's a there's a place for that, but it's not for what I'm trying to do, and so I need someone that's going to be able to draw a clean line so I could like go in and color it and letter it because I'm hand lettering them. So anyway, uh, that's two projects. I'm doing whatever happened to Shield Lad, which is going to be a like a novella. Uh, basically, it's about a guy who gets uh, superpowers at age 13, and for three years he's a superhero. And then something happens to him, and for the next 23 years, he's not a superhero. He's not on the grid, and he wakes up one day, and life has passed him by, and everyone that's been around him uh, has grown up, and the world has changed, and I want to tell that story. All right, second one uh, that I'm going to talk about is the Axeman. Um, the Axeman is uh, a Hollywood executive goes 
in the span of a day from uh, a person with power to a person with no power. And he's, he used to work for a mogul, but the mogul uh, is sort of like the crazy king. He's, um, any game of, uh, any, uh, any Song of Fire and Ice fans would know he was, he's the mad king, basically. Like, he was good as a young man, but as an old man, uh, he went, uh, insane. And, basically, uh, the, the executive who was nicknamed the Axeman because he was in charge of, uh, killing projects, uh, in the studio, he gets, uh, targeted, and what ensues is a, uh, like, a, it's like, a, like, he goes down swinging, basically. So that's Axeman. It's gonna be the so. Here, here's the thing. I want to belt these things out. Like I, like I'm. I've had these things in my head forever, and I want to get them right. But I don't. They're not novels. They're not War and Peace. They're not uh, things like that. So my goal is to take uh, the formats, pre-write the formats, uh, do them up, do them right. That's the key part. Do them right. Uh, so get those done. And then, because this year, I want to try to change the way I do things since I'm a lazy writer. I don't always write what I need to. Uh, so I want to be like those old pulp writers that on a typewriter would type out like, like 50,000 words a month. And they would get paid by the word. And that's how they supported themselves like 50,000 words a month that's a nano remo every month the and they would tell like these stories that were just uh written like they were paid by the word but still like they did one every month a novel a month and i i i'm not going to do 50,000 word pieces but at the same time i do want to do whole stories that get at what I'm trying to do. Then, uh, the, the last one I want to do of those is one I've been working on, which is called Anathema. Anathema is, uh, a girl gets superpowers, uh, and it's not pretty. It's a horror book, uh, the way that she gets the powers, the situation she gets the powers, uh, that's how it's going to go. And that one I really want to get done because I've had it in my head for several years and I'm starting to get to the point where it's like, like I got to start sharing it with the world, even though that's the one I'm most afraid of because uh, it's, it's a horror book. It's the one I don't know how people will take. Uh, and that, like... I'm not after people's approval, but at the same time, I mean, uh, that's a tough thing to wrap your head around if, like, whether people will get it. Like, I don't care if they like it, it's whether they get it. So, uh, let's see. Then, one of my, uh, resolu my other resolutions, I want... I know that I'm behind on pop culture, but I'd rather be contributing to the culture more, because this year I watched Voltron, or this past year I watched Voltron, Mindhunters, uh, the three Berserk films that, uh, that redid the Golden Age arc, which, by the way, they were good. Like, if you want to, like, in about four hours, watch... Uh, the Golden Age arc, like, I would much rather do the 20 episode, 20 some odd episodes of the old Berserk anime again, because I think that did just a little bit better of a job, but, the, like, like, there's, like, little, little things that, uh, that, ch that were little differences, like, the animation's a little bit cleaner in, uh, the new movies, but, but here's what I'm gonna do. Like, if I watch something, I'm going to tell you about it on this uh, thing. Uh, hopefully, I get a camera set up so that I can, like, uh, vlog instead of podcast. 
uh, or making a real vlog. So, uh, it's, but the, that's step number two. That's, that's my first step for Friday. Get a goddamn camera, set it up so that I can record things. So, uh, so I want to do two a week for the next year. So that's going to be over a hundred episodes. So Kale, Kale goes home or whatever. It's going to be a hundred episodes plus. And like, that's not counting the things that I want to do. I'm working on a documentary on fake geek girls right now, which I've been working on for a few months. Like I've been going to comic conventions and just like interviewing people there. So I've been going to like where nerds are. So I'm a little bit stilted. So I got to get more like less stilted, uh, interviews. And like, there's a couple movies I have like a varying length that I want to shoot like for YouTube. So, so, well, anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, here's the 2018. I hope you guys, uh, uh, ride with me for uh, the next year. Peace.